really feels like a recruiting process all over again. Except you don't get to choose, they choose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about DeMarcus in terms of next year, particular guys that you could play against and kind of test yourself and see how you do? Dwight Howard, of course. Hopefully Shaq's still around. <laughs> I mean, Paul Gasol. I mean, I, I believe he's one. Of the, he's the greatest big man playing right now. Um, I mean, it, it'll be a challenge. Do you watch games any differently now, or do you, that you know you're going to be again playing against those guys next year? Uh, I really, I'm really not watching it that much. But I mean, I, I watch Paul Gasol a lot because I just like his skill work. How do, you, how do you think the transition will go? I, I assume most of your life you've been the biggest, strongest guy in the court to, to play against equals and guys who are bigger and stronger. Say it again? I said, how do you think the transition will be? I'm assuming most of your life you've, you've been the biggest, strongest guy in the court. Um, it, I mean, it'll just be a new transition, just like it was from high school to college. I mean, it's something you got to get used to and you got to adapt to. Who's the best guy you ever played against? I let John every day in practice. <laughs> Tear my knees up. <laughs> how, how, how good can you be in this league? Can you be a franchise player? Thanks, Bill. I do believe I can be a franchise player. What makes you believe that? The way I'm working right now. Mark says it's sunk in that this whole process and that you'll be in the league next year. Is it really sunk in yet? Um, yeah, it has, and I mean, what's really hitting me is I'm going to be on the same floor with LeBron James, and I really don't know how I'm going to react. <laughs> but you were already, you came to the game. But he was just watching. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Are there agent has been telling us, you know, how he thinks you should be the number one player taken. How important is that to you? Um, it's very important to me, um, and I appreciate my agent pushing me out like that. Um, I believe everybody's agent should push their player like that. But, I mean, that's that's my main goal right now. I want to be the number one player in the draft. You decided uh, not to do the basketball stuff in the combine. I want to understand what is the um, thought process behind that. That was That's what my agent, my agent believes I shouldn't do it, so I'm just following his lead. How much do you have to trust what they're telling you in these situations, too. I mean, you got to trust them 100. percent I mean, I've never been through this process before, so I don't know what to expect. How'd your interview with Minnesota go? Do you get any sense coming away from something like that of, of what kind of impression they got? Uh, I believe Minnesota likes me a lot. How do you how do you, how do you sense that? I mean, it was just a good vibe in the room. Did you used to play with uh, with with Al Jefferson and Kevin together. I don't know. I've never played with. Him. <laughs> was Kurt Rambis part of that? Sir? Was Kurt Rambis part of the interview? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Why is it important to Marcus to be the number one guy? I mean, I don't want to sit here and say I want to be the third pick, fourth pick. I mean, everybody here wants to be the number one pick. That said, if it's John or the, if the other way around, I assume you guys are close enough that you'd be happy for, for the other one regardless. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know how we are. I mean, it's, it's never any type of jealousy like that. We're always going to be happy for one another. You guys can talk a little bit, though, whoever gets it. Right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about snow and cold if you went to Minnesota? I had to deal with it in Kentucky. <laughs> So what was it like going on that? I mean, it was kind of funny when you sent out a tweet about your first fishing trip. You got the bucket hat on and stuff. You said, it seemed like you really enjoyed it. What was it like just doing some stuff that maybe you haven't? I didn't know fishing was that hard. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, fish really fight. <laughs> but, I mean, it was fun. And, uh, it was a new experience. I had a lot of fun doing it. Did you hear on that seafood diet? Did you eat that fish? Yeah. I kind of felt bad, too, because it was like two hours ago this fish was living. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to gut it though, did you? Nah, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> you didn't really think about that until you catch it yourself. Yeah. So, how much do you 
much has, you know, the, the off-court stuff that we saw sometimes, the kind of the clash between you and Calipari during games, how much did that come up in the interview process of the team so far? Um, I'm hearing that question in every interview. How do you answer that? I tell them the truth. What's that? That was, we were allowed to get feedback, and that's how we, that's how we work. Why did they react to that? I mean, some coaches were like, okay, but some were like, so what if the coaches that you play for don't allow feedback? Well, I just got to play. Do you have to play for a high school and be a coach like a Larry Brown who there is no feedback with a guy like him? Is that, would that be cool with you? Yeah. Is that one of the misconceptions, Mark? Is that you're uncoachable? I mean, in your mind, there's been you've mentioned some throughout the year, but is that one that that bothers you? I mean, it does bother me because playing for Kyle is very tough. I mean, everybody knows that, and he's a very emotional coach. But I mean, you got to play through it. And I mean, we were successful this season, so I believe every player on that team was coachable. Would you want to play for Cal in the NBA if he wanted to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not answering that. <laughs> that might be the first thing you haven't answered all year. <laughs> I'm not answering that. Any more uh, phone calls from Mississippi State fans? You know what? Something crazy did happen. Somebody hacked into my Facebook and put the old number on my page. So, I don't know. day like now? What do you do when you're I wake up at 8 and my day probably ends at 4 or 5 and I sleep. <laughs> get ready for the next day. What goes into those hours that you're awake? I mean, like what's your schedule? Workout. That's it. Is it some weight room stuff, some basketball stuff or is it? Basketball. I mean those things I told you, that's, that's what we do. You, you said boxing. What exactly are you doing? It helps, you, it helps you with stamina. I mean, are you hitting the heavy bag? Or? Heavy bag, I'm hitting, I'm hitting targets, I'm dies, I'm doing all of that. Any people? No, no, no. <laughs> Anybody you'd like to get in there with? No. Sean Butler. Yeah, I don't know. I think a couple of people. <laughs> 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 Marcus, if you had to choose another profession outside basketball, what would it be? I'll do you guys job. Uh... Really? <laughs> how would you, how what kind of interviewer would you be? Would you be real tough? Would you be like a friendly guy? What kind of... I'd be like you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I figure you'd, try, you'd say you try to land the plane. <laughs> <laughs> what, what type of interview are you? He's tough. I'd be like you.